If you open it, you will see fantastic stuff inside. Who made it so compact? We don't do that. How is an antenna designed for a mobile phone? We don't do that. So wireless system, 5G, 6G is going to come. Tremendous application for medical application. But this is a gadget that I developed by a Japanese company. It works at 60 gigahertz, uh, transmits 60 gigahertz, and there's an iris here. And then you put a fingertip, depending on your blood glucose level, it reflects the signal. And you can calibrate it, and you can develop a 60 gigahertz portable glucose meter. It's not yet available in our country because 50% of the people are diabetes, but we still take out the blood. So you should look at it. Uh, RF is not only for uh, uh, satellites or defense. It has a lot of medical applications. Security satellite system, you can detect using a handheld scanner, satellites. You have BMW cars everywhere now in the country, 77 giga radars. And uh, this is a security system. We like it has detection capability for ceramic guns, metallic guns, and other uh, stuff in the both of them. They are a new system. Why you don't come physically in contact with the person? Because you know, if I'm carrying bombs, the way we do security check today, we will blow up everything if we do proximity checking. So they are developing a system, I will be sitting in a van, you can see it at some distance. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it's 500, 600 gigahertz, 600. And then this is the air defense system. This was the part of uh, LRD. I think uh, we became very famous for that. Regenera radar, and we uh, got guidance from them to develop these waterfall parts. These are phase shifters, and I was told 383 crores of these phase shifters are already in production. And it came from a group like ours, but we had no software those days. So emerging applications of 5G, so you have every talks. I know DSP today, you have a project at 5G, it comes. <laughs> or you have the Internet of Things, so these are the frequencies, 628, 60 Giga, distributed technologies, IoT, for computing, software defined networks, low cost, low power millimeter systems, I think we are talking about cents now. Can we design a radio for 50 cents at 60 gigahertz? Answer, we don't know about it, but there are people working in Berkeley and Stanford. Wireless, high definition radios, variable systems, high data rate, transceiver security, and air defense system. This health monitoring, if you see the Apple Watch, it takes my ECG every five minutes. And they're going to have a sensor soon which will take my blood sugar. I think in a few months' time. Look at the kind of gadgets they are having, kind of sensors. Those are the kind of things which you should look at and work on. So if you look at emerging wireless, we started with zero generation to five generation, it was voice only, then we came 2.4 kilobytes, 64 and so on. We are going to go to 5G. And to achieve greater than 10 gigabits per second rate, we use 28, 60 gigabits and beyond. Unfortunately in India, we stop that we have 4G, I get on my mobile 4G, it's not 4G. It's not even 3.5G, it's much lower than that. The general rates in coffee shop in US, Starbucks is 10 times. Maybe much more than that if you want to download a file. So this is what was earlier, you know, we had area coverage. How many square meters we can cover? Then we can bits per second, hertz, square kilometer, spectrum efficiency. Now everybody is looking at energy efficient networks and that's what is coming in 5G. So future, we have the source management to achieve gigabit energy efficient networks. A lot of work done by Japanese if you Google. So this is one of the studies, you know, if you have a uh, cell area of 1000 meters and you reduce it to 33 meters, theoretically it has been proved that it gives 1000 times capacity increase, 75,000 times signal energy reduction. And what we need here, we need basically cell towers with very close uh, multiple towers which is called distributed antenna network or DAN, so the mobiles will communicate with these. But when you do this kind of system, you have to be very careful because remember Professor Girish Kumar of IIT Bombay, he always talks of radiation effects. And recent studies in years have shown when they did tests for 5G link, they found a lot of birds that died. The trees had turned uh, from green to white, uh, green to yellow. So there are effects, so these need to be studied along with the technology development. So small cell network used for green wireless. When you do these kind of technology in India, you know, hundreds of projects are sanctioned on 5G, Madras IIT, Kharagpur IIT, Delhi IIT, 90% of the work is done software. Why is the hardware going to come? Why is the radio going to come? Nobody thinks about it. So some of you should look at uh, these kind of things. So this is a photograph of an ant-sized radio in Stanford. This is the 
paper. It's a radio printed on paper. It has a 24 gigahertz antenna and 60 gigahertz antenna. It doesn't require power. It basically, the signal which comes up, it, it basically derives power from it. So these kind of things which cost 10, 20 cents have been done by research it's like you. So this is future technology. So we should look at it. You type it uh, 60 uh, and size radio in the Google, you will find birthday and also stand for data. So this is another very important thing coming, mostly from Russian millimeter wave therapy. You know you go for spa to the massage. I think future will be all millimeter wave spa. A lot of literature exists that living cells generate automatic electromagnetic field. Cell communication is at 42.5, 53, these are all millimeter wave bands. Cause of poor health is unbalanced in these waves. And communication with body cell cell membranes for low intensity exposure. If you have a problem with pancreas, go before a millimeter wave generator, low intensity exposure and you will get cured. There are results available. And it's now coming that you will have shocks, millimeter wave therapy shocks. And the research has shown healing effect of cardiovascular diseases, gastric diseases, and toxic effects of chemotherapy. So this will require lightweight, affordable millimeter sources. I think earlier, why this was not important to pursue? Mainly because millimeter was mostly the defense sources were 25 dollars. Today you can get a Hitachi chip for ten dollars. So you can do these kind of things. So don't think that millimeter waves are only for communication. I think it has tremendous applications of for medical area also. So this whole game of this electromagnetic started in 1865. Right? It was introduced to Maxwell's equations and there are other integral differential forms. And uh, their existence was proved by Hertz and our own scientist J.C. Gold. None of us was born in 1895. We were good at that time. And if you look at, he demonstrated existence of the limit of the 60 gigahertz, he was wave guides, horns, dielectric lenses, polarizers. They were innovative. It was innovative. I think if you go to whole history, you will see all these things there. And some concepts are used in US uh, for their 12 meter radio. And a nice research article in 1997 was 1895 wasn't great. Why are we today? If we have had a reverse trend. So this is what he did, transmitting antenna, point contact detector, polarizers made out of paper and metal foils, jute, and then free space radiation receiver, variable attenuators. They start with guys who require basically 1895. You are in 2019, you should do times better. Now this is what happened. You know, India began with millimeter waves in 1895 to 100, introduced wake horns, demonstrated reflection, reflection. Then 1940 was period of lower duty, early 50s, initiators of microwave IC, Hartford, Allahabad University, several other universities were there. 2000, 2019, now we have modern satellite systems, microelectromechanical systems are being deployed. Monolithic microwave integrator circuits are done in the country. Millimeter wave integrator circuits, phase arrays, PR modules using GAN, gas, silicon germanium. DIDO, ISAO is very active in this. EMI, EMC, Pani is here, is an expert in this area. The last part is microeducation. This is something we have taught. Everything else is there, the problem microeducation. If you look at RF and microeducation, I have put here, why are we much behind the rest? Since both of us here, I don't want to put 50 years behind the rest. So we are really much behind the rest. Why? Syllabus outdated in most colleges and universities, including IOTs. Syllabus is totally outdated. Training is probably theoretically based with equations, and you reproduce minor one, minor two, and you come out on your own, you know nothing. And as both of us mentioned, your know, jobs are a big problem. Jobs are not a problem in this country. I, Finished my film as a chairman of Astra Microwave, which is one very big company. And we had on the day I left, after 10 years as chairman, that was March 31st, 170 vacancies in RF engineers. But when you interview people, they can't even design a filter. So we need people with skill sets. Companies don't have money and time people. So R&D labs, inadequate coordination with education institution, R&D labs, indigenous technology is lagging, over depends on software and import industry. No faith in indigenous R&D, need more industries, need increased industry participation in foundries. We need really many more foundries. If chip design has to be done, we need it to be in the chip to be factory. But today, scenario is not bad. It's existing today through data. Students are not interested in innovation. They want degrees quickly, aims to get a degree as quickly as possible. I have done a data. That's all. 
If you look at your parents, engineering is status quo. My son has done engineering B from which I am today or this. He's waiting for their child to get degree, get married. He has dumped him or her. This is the scenario in India. And the teachers is not a noble profession. The last priority is to join as a teacher. Do not motivate students. Do not teach beyond syllabus. Don't keep themselves updated about new technology. You know, as a fly, I look at my mobile. Every hour, one hour, technology changes. You have to update yourself every one hour. Only then you can go to class and tell students. GAN is now important. Indian phosphate is important. Noems is important. If you don't do that, of course, in the university, we have to cover the syllabus. Uh, that's what it is. Administrators who only have financial benefits. Innovations are not governments. And then we have a problem in our DNA. When God made us and put us in India, He created this problem. We all talk I. This is mine. We don't talk of this ours. We don't want to work together, whether it is lab, whether it is IIT. This professor doesn't talk to this professor. This is a fundamental problem in our gene. We need to change, we want to grow. You have to shake hands and work together. No other solution. Now look at our syllabus, our microeducation, undergraduate level, we used to have a course in electromagnetic theory. Basically, we have got experiment, microengineering, PG level, these three courses. Unfortunately, due to IT centric education, it's easy to buy computer and dump software and train students. Insufficient design, education, and hardware exposure is creating vacuum and If you have not made a filter, what kind of engineer you are? So I talk to many UG students because concepts at UG level are not clear. Students go to temple, mosque, whatever they want and take an oath. In this life, I will not take any out of my own course. This is a fact. I don't want to take out of That's how we teach in the class for the students to think that is a very difficult subject. So we have to challenge is to change this information technology to information communication technology with hands of experience. And this we realize Way back in the 80s and 90s, and since then we have been working, we should have one student to do projects today, we have hundreds. We have today 27 PhD students, very high level PhD students, among three faculty. So we have to produce good students who have knowledge about these kind of things. So this is another thing, design and development of complex micro material circuits, antennas, everything will require hands-on experience and understanding basic EM concepts, familiarization with technologies. Knowledge of electromagnetic field simulators, knowledge of CAT tools, this is important, right? Hands-on experience in micro millimeter circuit design. You see bottom slides, you see the antenna, innovation, everything. It's not only microwave, mechanical, biology. You have to work as a team and then software development skills. So if you don't do this, it is difficult. So these are the technologies, you know, we know only microscope every day, a paper comes, microscope antenna, microscope antenna, create like this, create like this, it's useless, it doesn't fit in, and then you say, it is published in Scopus Index 2.0, it is junk. Paper is high to this is what is needed today. Then we create an air gap, become suspended microscope, you know, we propose this idea in 80s. But my student last week published an microscope transaction paper by creating this air gap using laser cutting at 60 gigahertz for 5G application. You have to be innovative. This thin line, suspended strip line, this is a transmission line, up to 300 gigahertz, the dielectric dies. Well, these are all applications. Then we have also learned about new technologies. I'm sure 80% of you wouldn't have heard polystated technology. This is a wafer level fabrication of suspended strip line. You can make circuits up to 300 gigahertz on wafer. CMOS, people thought it can be used on a low frequency, non millimeter wave circuits are also there. Low temperature co fire ceramic. Uh, vertical integration and the latest on 3D wafer level integration. Lot of circuits on one wafer, lot of circuits on only join wafers rather than cutting them and joining because you will save a lot of uh, you know, interconnect losses and other things. So these are the technologies and silicon photonics is another very, very important area. Uh, so you should learn these technologies. At least teachers should thank you, give an assignment or a quiz or something like that so that you understand this when you are. So, we don't have less facilities today, if you I have mapped some of them, IIT Delhi has created the facility up to 1000 gigahertz, I have complete facility measurement up to 1000, SAC up to 500, Deep Level 2, IPR, a lot of places in universities have millimeter wave facilities today. There are jobs, there are facilities, only thing you have to take a train or flight, you don't need to recreate these facilities. Similarly, your foundries start. CMOS, MEMS, LTCC, GATEC in Hyderabad, MMIC is in MEMS. We did first GATEC, switch to GATEC, made in India. 
So look at that complex, C Mossman, C Tulani, is meant, C meant only is LPCC. Quite a few things are existing in the bioelectronics is also now uh, they have LPCC facility. So today you have to sign an MOU as a university and they will allow you to access these facilities. So don't say that facilities are not existing if you meant we were sooner nothing was there. Today much better facilities are uh, existing. Now Recent trends in our microwave is usually level cold and electromagnetics. Microwave integrates the circuits. We have to introduce planar transmission line. If it is kit, evolved because of this. We tried it in IIT, then I tried it in Singapore. I think when we have hands on experience, our students come, one or two day by experiment, but mostly on planar transmission line. Using this kit, you will learn how to test a filter and then later you make it. Gives students different specifications. And then we have several courses at the PG level. And also you need to introduce electric courses in MEMS, RFIC, radio frequency integrity circuit, RF nanotechnology, and then buzzwords, artificial intelligence, machine learning. This is important because for complex antenna optimization, these techniques will be used. Now, I will share now some experience of Indian Institute of Technology, our experience. And then when I joined IIT in 77, one student, no student used to come, and today we don't have space to get students. So many of them come. Whenever you teach electromagnetics, I think what happens in your big class, you come. So many students, so difficult. Next day, half of the students run away. We should always say electromagnetics is an easy subject. First day, when you do the introduction, very easy. Much easier than MATLAB. So once you do that, 10 more students come next day. So that's the thing. I teach first year course is 32 to 3 to 40 students in my master's course who stay back to last year. Focus more on fundamentals and equations, introduce hands-on experiment for each, this is important. In each of my course, I teach an active circuit code, they make a power amplifier as part of the course. Make students innovate and think big. We don't make students think big. 10,000 rupee call center job is what we tell students to do. It is waste of time and effort. Our students get at least 2 to 3 lakhs a month. That's the kind of thing. It's all mindset. Make students work on industry relevant project. This is very important. Take a project from DIA, work on a real problem in the lab. Impart circuit to system level training in UGPG because when you come out, you won't learn these techniques. It has to be done in the system. So if we started understanding current scenario, you look at academia, we have sufficient tons of money available. Work carried out in isolation, we don't like anybody. Publication, you will more various the technology development. And I think you have a photograph of Dr. Kalam. I was fortunate to work here with seven, eight years. We always talk of technology development and data. Intermediate body needs to translate laboratory to prototype to commercialization. That's why 80% of our products stay black. It doesn't get commercialized. You see, you've seen uh, he also is a professor and also works as a scientist at Gotham. When you do these antenna designs, are done by post docs and then you deploy it in a practical scenario. Training the party to student highly theoretical. Professors think they are the best. I don't know. Industry guy in check. This is what is our mentality. When you look at industry, they don't have much funding, we need everything yesterday. US takes 10 years to produce something we need yesterday. Balance sheets important than patents, have more faith in indigenous R and D. Need highly skilled mind forward that's not currently available. They're not up to date about current technologies. Used to follow top down approach, buy something, type it now, you can't cut chips. It's not possible. You need to develop this from scratch. And they also say we are the best. What is in this academy of professor? Useless. It doesn't mind if you are the best. So we learned from this experience many, many years back. This is what we did. We partnered with Academia plus industry. We did both oriented rather than open ended research. We don't do in our book any research which does not get translated to a product which company uses. Right, day one, work with industry or DRDO or CSR, take a problem which is useful and work on it. Technology development, innovative you know, R&D to be recognized. Unfortunately, AICT norms do not give you anything unless you have papers. They may be a challenge, but that's it. Industry person to have access to R&D facility, all of us are the best. We should join hands. We need to work together, we need to jointly create several foundries. Academia to help industry training manpower and its win-win situation for both industry. We realized this in 79 and had it right from day one. The we name of our center is Center for Applied Research. It's not open and research. So this is what we did. We worked with LRD and many, many IOK. We spent nights 
together and the product KC pan phase shifter, X pan phase shifter, which are actually used in radars today. So we're really grateful to people from LRD who taught us what is needed in the practical radar. And then radar uh, it got translated into this. And then we did a small one called the Winterite, and we had two scientists from LRD translated it into pin dial six with phase shifter. I a nice student who translated it to MEMS space shifter and I'm proud to say here we developed the world's smallest MEMS space shifter with an interface 4 mm tested in 10 billion cycles with shock and life which I'm sure you put in that picture made in India and we have patented it in US it's a 60 page patent we have filed it in US and got it so we wrote several books these have become basically uh, Bibles in US most of the industry and defense who use phase that is use this from here we moved working in other DRU labs with other technologies, mixer development 18 to 26, 20 to 40. Major funding comes from here because cost of these mixers is only 20,000 rupees. We get 20, 30 lakhs per project. So you see about 18, 90 lakhs to pump that into equipment. We do the first two transmission line books way back. Then did research on thin lines, uh, the documentation in three books. Finally, you know, like a director guide, which is not much popular in India still, but we did trans receivers at 35, 90, 60 gigahertz for the US patent and wrote a 560 page book, which has become now a popular book in the US for the graduate teacher. Continue from here, we did a lot of work on MEMS, and since I was chairman of Astra, my students had access. So we did fabricate seven MEMS phase shifters, and it's a 35 gigahertz arc MEMS phase shifter. Student goes to Astra does morning and this becomes a module which can actually fly because all tests and other things are done at the company. So it's really important to work with industry. So KG I produced a book where he invited us to write two chapters on uh, one of the chapters was on the phase shifters, the other chapter was on the switch. So finally we decided that we don't so much of work with men and we have a famous professor from UCSD, uh, Professor Reddy's who produced the first R of men's book. And he always used to say that not much is being done in India. So we showed him that we can do, and this is our latest book. Radio frequency micro-mission switches and switching network. This is the phase shifter, which is this is micron, not micron, it's millimeter, 4.7 by 3.8 millimeter. World's smallest phase shifter, and this is patented already in the US. Just came in May 2019. So we can do it from India. If we start working with industry, all the products which are in this book are actually for industry, and we also have with the US company to work on. Now when we do research, now this is what I was saying, because we teach students how to do goal oriented research. I'll just tell you how our students and researchers do and publish papers. Now this student whose work I'm going to present can develop an antenna in one every week he does an event. Which is actually useful. Actually useful. So I just highlight so first thing what we do, we tell them survey the literature. So he goes through the Google 5G vision of Samsung. So looks at various applications of 5G. So once he looks at this, then he finds the research gaps. What are the research gaps which need to be tackled? So challenges are high cost loss at 28 gigahertz and beyond. We know it very well. Hardware design at KMI may challenging. Commercial radio 4G is already there. Can we modify it for 5G? And Girish Kumar's concern that there are radiation effects. Once he knows this, then he finds out what are the things we should do to earn a PhD and to just get the best publications? So it's not open anymore. It's basically practical only. Then he goes through coverage of 28 gigahertz signal in New York, opposite to the similar. So finds 200 meters is a paper in 2005 on 5G signal level. Finds 200 meters is the best coverage. If you want to go beyond it, what we need to do is to get more gain of the antenna. So one of the problems now is how to design an antenna with familiar with microstrip. So the high gain antenna is the rescue. We have a patch antenna 3 gigahertz, so we go to 30 gigahertz or 28, 60 by 60, and several patches here, depending on the game, you can design this area. So this is basically the distance between transmitter and receiver can be increased. The propagation loss can be improved. This is 2014. So once he does this, he has now clearly understood what are the research gaps and what we should know. Now the second thing, it has to fit in in a mobile, so you can use a portrait mode, you can use landscape mode, yeah, it has to work whatever you take. So once it does this, then you have to figure out this is a 4G, now 5G, you have a radio here, and we'll fix an antenna here, we have to fix an antenna. You don't want to make this big antenna, then tell somebody else to fit it, it won't work. 
And at the same time, this has uh, coverage and this has uh, all the features of the current mobile phone. This is 2017 ITP transaction data. Then the second thing is we can have a phase data here. If you want to scan, we can have a phase data here. So these are the techniques reported again in 2017 with several game figures. A thorough analysis and literature survey is very, very important before you venture into a new design. So this is what he does now. Once he's clear, so he starts with CST microwave stereo and the research gaps are formed, designs a corner bed antenna, and it's a coplanar wave guide. This is a slot here, and all the dimensions are optimized. And please look at this is a southwest connector, and this is a corner bed antenna, which will actually fit in on your mobile. And this is an ITP access 15 page paper just published in 2019. So, if you look at this kind of antenna, it's very small. The antenna is only this size, it will actually fit in the mobile, and I was talking to just for testing. Now, he measures the gain on this antenna, about 5 dB simulated, and uh, measured uh, slightly different because the moment you fix it, there are other effects. The return loss is around 10 dB for this kind of thing at 28 dB. Now, the next thing what he does, plays with CST microwave studio and introduces a unit cell and checks the characteristics of this unit cell in this particular band and then idea is to increase the gain. So what he does, he creates a shield here which is called a reflector, puts these unit cells here and mounts it next to this reflector so it's now a small portion here attaches it to this antenna. Once he does this, now the gain improves to about 8 dB, 7 to 8 dB and it becomes, it becomes much broader. And each one of these is a publication. Now then, this is how then he uses 3D printed scaffolding because ultimately it has to fit in on the mobile corner and measures the radiation pattern without and with reflector you can see if you hold this mobile on the other side the radiation is less. So the least point of concern that uh, specific absorption rate on the other side is less is taken care in this one. It has to be done at a switch level, not at industry level. So this is what he does now, the simulated gain is flat, uh, 9 dB here, this return loss is better than 10 dB, that would be 8 dB. So these are the patterns, so everything is done by the student himself. Then the next thing is he does autonomous pattern diagnostic with conformal antenna, so make another type of antenna. Please, I'm telling you honestly, the student is so fast, he finished PhD for half years, every week he comes up with a design is published, every week. So this is another type of design, and again it's called the band. So we first tested without banding, and this was published in 2018. Then the major zip is about 8 dB, uh, straight away at only 8 giga, and this is the issue, and we did with the losses are here. These are the patterns, and this is the how he does. He creates another unit cell, and an array of unit cells, this is total manage. So it's a complete unit cell, introduces this unit cell before the antenna, and folds this, it becomes an infinite very reflected. It's about 7 dB gain, and this is the return of 10 dB. So you can see 3D patterns without and with FSS at 28 gigahertz. So this is useful for if you want to use this uh, and be careful about the absorption, which probably it only projects the uh, beams only in one direction. Then we look at orthogonal pattern because you would like to have uh, portrait mode, you have to have this, so you connect one antenna here, another antenna. We always have a mobile, we created a 3D pattern of a mobile uh, body, so we fit it on the actual mobile and check it. So we can see the uh, patterns in the two directions, so we can use the orthogonal pattern diversity. Now, he also found that there is a such gap if you have a uh, transmitter fixed on the CU, depending on if you are directly under it or if you are away from it, the Signal here and signal here will be different. So you would not like to have that. You would like to gain control in such a way that wherever you go, it has to be seen performance. So he does a lot of theoretical calculations and then comes up with gain variation basically from 0 degrees to 60 degrees. This comes up with gain variation physically. Then you have to now come up with the antenna which will take care of this particular gain. So it has a slot antenna, basically stock stack pattern diversity module. So a small antenna like this, just first this tapered slot, it gives you 9 dB is good for the straight path. But when you go to the bend path, it's 12 dB you need, you need 3 dB additional to cover for the path process. So this is your 9 dB gain, at 28 for the straight antenna, very good return loss at 28 dB. It comes up with a unit cell now to take care of the gain in the other two directions. And then if you use this 
unit cells, hundreds of these unit cells, and this is a module which is finally made, which basically gives you 3D additional gain in these interactions. So test it, we get about 3 dB increase in the gain, which was 9 dB becomes not well not 5 dB. Now create one antenna, another antenna, this is the central antenna, this is 9 dB, this is 12 dB, this is 12 dB, and measure the patterns of these three, now the problem is sorted out. So this is how you do, you have one beam here, another beam here, and you have this straight small antenna, which will be about 130 degrees. So the point which I'm trying to say basically here, don't start the problem just like that, it's of no use. Take a problem after doing literature survey, find out what is missing and why will it be used, then it becomes more practical and you have a lot of complications. So this is how the shear aperture antenna comes up, then he can make a uh, different unit cell in order to discuss this uh, in detail. So this is how another type of antenna which is basically a shear aperture antenna and these are the unit cells which come out. Each one of these because theory and experiment is done, it has a practical application. Industry funding comes from these projects, we have a publication in a very good journal and these kind of things. You can now see 10 dB gain using this uh, Zen cell. This is the pattern. So work is now going on to build new types of antennas for future base stations and uh, other types of uh, mobile antennas. And this has a lot of interesting science subjects. And this boy has just submitted thesis, already some sentence built up in uh, Korea. So we'll be going to Korea to deploy and put these antennas in actual mobile phones. So there is no there for jobs, it is not you work on. And you need to prepare your hands uh, besides your classroom equations and so need of the day is keep abreast of our inventory research and design and technology. It's not only desirable, it's mandatory. Everybody will be fitted with a gadget in future, which will be transmitting signals at these high frequencies. You must know what is this RF micro matrix as it is, right? Need students who can innovate. They are called real engineers. Right now you are imaginary engineers. We need real engineers who can develop circuits. Need normal teachers who can motivate young students to make them think big. So this is a job for the teachers, noble teachers, who treat all of you as children. When my daughter, you are my son, then I think you will be much more effective. So nobody would like to have a son or daughter not do well. There is a strong need for hardware art engineers for equipment with design know-how as well as practical knowledge to implement the circuits, impart practical skill, skills to students who be on syllabus. You can take one or two lectures extra or all distinguished lecturers. There are more than hundreds available uh, who can talk on different topics and speak to you and this is important and start learning and teaching about these techniques now so that country will be known as technologies for power but Prime Minister's dream is made in India this will come true and student specialization in RF I can watch you have extremely bright future join RF I would like to have at least 30-40 new members of the society and Jimmy can send some to RF group of the International Academy of Engineering, I can guarantee you two months you have two papers. Everything is there, please come. Send, take a letter from Chitna, you want to work with us for two months, all the cities will be provided and current problems will be given. There are two students from Hyderabad, both have submitted papers to India. It's not difficult because the environment is like that, material is available, hardware is there, everything is available at one place. So we started actually Sigma YA, it's a special interest group on micro wireless, part of the education. Society, we realize even in the US, I think undergrad students, in fact, undergrad membership is coming mostly from India, not from uh, in Europe and US. We realize that they also don't have had some experience. So we started thinking of setting up training centers across India to provide the basic low cost PC based measurement facility with trainer kids. Trainer kit is given between low cost PC also, PC based method analyzer. And this we want to spread to many student branches so that when you design an antenna and make it, you have a facility to characterize it. You get much better feel of it. There are 19 centers already identified. One is in Toronto, that is yours. And we provide access to students to come to the base training. This was another project under this in Hawaii. NTU Taiwan has now developed, which was deployed in Boston uh, meeting, a tool which can be used for teaching electromagnetics. It's an excellent tool. It is free for your student branch. I will send a link to uh, Tonight, and you can start using it in the class. It has chart, it has everything. It's an excellent tool. I'll send you the link. Use it in the class. 
And I MPTS provides funds for undergraduate postgraduate students interested in doing innovative projects related to applications. For example, I was talking to that lady, she works on 200 gigas, 300 gigas. It's, it's, it's a summit, a page, one page proposal. You get $1,500 for UG, $5,000 for PG, $6,000 for biomedical related projects. I, I think there's more no application in India. Please go to IEEE. Uh, MTT.org and look at it. Some two, three projects funding is available. And we also provide funding for chapter chairs uh, to travel to any of the four conferences. And uh, Gautam is the uh, chair for the IMARC. And this year we have first time created 50 PhD students funding to attend IMARC conference in India to get exposure to research in our environment. I would suggest if we have few, not many, undergrad or master students. Please send a note to him or me, we'll provide you funds for that also. No problem. Let them go there and get exposed to what is IMAR, what are the interactions with people. Two presidents will be coming, this year's president Dominic and Allah will be coming. And uh, we would like to thank uh, you for starting ITP MTS School, Project ITP MTS Chapters in Capital, because I remember we talked in IMAR and we were very fast uh, to do that. And, uh, Give our recruiting students and organize some events that will be there to support. So I'm not in Elcom, I'm finished in Elcom. I still go to Elcom, but Gautam is there in Elcom and we have many friends in Elcom. We will support you to India. And uh, I think this uh, NGA budget is roughly $200,000. And uh, many people from India are traveling and I have been liberal in fund, uh, giving funds to chapters. Make use of it so that you can do that. This is important. Faculty and students to do goal-oriented research rather than open policy. Please do that. And think big. In fact, I used to use font of 90. Very big. Think big. The other students think like this. So a job, so big. But my students think, feel like it is a job. That's the kind of thing. And the thinking comes, you know, when I was a student, my boss was a lady from Harvard, I think. All of you know her, she was a party, but and uh, this is the book which was presented to me then, 77. And I preserve it. If you don't get it, I give you a PDF copy, I send it to Chennai. It is high rupees only. But nobody wants to spend high rupees, spend 100, 200 rupees on mobile. Read some of the book, hot for power. And read it 10 times. You get 10 times energy. You will think that I will also work like both of them and put uh, something on the Mars. So it's a very good book, but you need to read it at least 10, 20 times. It says you can drink ocean. So that's the kind of energy you need and you will grow that. Uh, thank you for your attention. This is my email, anything you need, we are here to help you. You don't send it to me, send it to Gautam. We are all together, we meet many times. And trust me, whatever support you need, in terms of students working with us, if you need some facilities, you need anything, I work to provide you, but grow. We like to have after one or two years, a lot of publications coming out, a lot of student exchanges, they can come down. Ultimate objective is to learn numbers, so that's what Edcom looks like. Thank you. If you have any good question, I would like to answer. Communicate with us, work with us. I have a complete facility. I can spend four or five lakhs on you. Please do it. That may be so expected. Please, you have to come. Thank you very much. Email to me, I'll send you. I have it on my computer, I can send it. But read it, please read it before you do it in any way, my code. Read it, you will get tremendous attention. Excellent people to work with, very dynamic guys. So make best. That's my question. Thank you. So thank you, sir.